Hey guys, welcome back to another 5 Academy video. So today we're going to be going through the next 10 skills in the 52 ACT math skills video series. Here are a few problem examples for the 10 skills. So if you want to go ahead and try the problems before we go through them, just to see how well of an understanding you have of the skills, I would definitely encourage it. So the, again, the whole purpose of the series is to go through all the skills so that you have something to base your understanding, the skill understanding of the entire math test off of. The exam tests you on the same skills every time. And if you're familiar with them, if you know the skills, then you have a very high likelihood of improving your math score. So again, that's the whole purpose of the video series. We're just trying to go through the skills and really show you what type of content you're gonna see that you just get used to it and through repetition, you end up learning it. All right, so let's get started without further ado. So the first problem type I wanna go through today is absolute value expression simplification. So again, absolute value is something that you've probably seen in school, but the whole purpose of this skill and this problem type is they really try to trick you to make sign mistakes. So really take each pro each element or part of the problem slowly and uh, you know try to avoid making those mistakes. And the way you do that is you start with the innermost part of the problem, then you work your way outwards, and then you work your way outwards. So let's just demonstrate that. So we're gonna start with solving what's inside here, which gives you negative four, right? So I'm gonna rewrite the entire problem. Absolute value of absolute value of absolute value of negative four, absolute value, minus seven, absolute value, minus 13, absolute value. Okay, it's a lot going on, but now we have, this is the most inner part, right? The innermost absolute value. I can eva evaluate this and this just gives me four. Now let's rewrite the problem. Absolute value, absolute value, negative four, minus seven, absolute value, minus 13. Right, I can evaluate this as absolute value of absolute value of negative three minus 13. And then that turns into absolute value of three minus 13. And this turns into absolute value of negative 10, which gives me 10. So that's your answer right there, okay? So really taking it bit by bit and making sure you're not making those sign mistakes is how you do this type of thing. Moving on, uh, next problem type is about similar and special right triangles. So the two triangles below are similar the larger of which has side lengths that are double the length of the smaller triangle. So which of the following is this length of side B? So the way these type of problems work is you'll, you'll be given two triangles and essentially the only difference between them is one is going to be a scaled up version of the other. So the one on the right is like it says, the side lengths are just double the one on the left. So the way you're going to do this is uh, quite literally take the corresponding side. In, in the case of this, it's going to be the one that's touching the right angle and that's the longer one and you're just gonna double it. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, now the, the way that they could have made this difficult is let's say they gave you the same problem and they didn't give you this number, okay? So they, it's the same problem and they ask you for what side length to be. So you think, okay, I'm just gonna take this number and double it, but I don't know what that number is. So in that case, you'd have to take the Pythagorean theorem and solve for that side. So you do seven squared plus B, uh, let's just call it A squared. I can't call it A, let's call it D squared equals 25 squared. So you solve for D. You end up getting, um, you know, if you do the math, you'll get D equals uh, 24. And then you can multiply that by 2 equals 48, okay? So it's just a typical example of what this could look like. Um, now, you could also get a problem in this problem type about the 45, 45, 90 and the 30, 60, 90. So 45, 45, 90. Uh, and this is going to be 60, 30. I'm just, I'm just writing this for reference. Um, but if you want to memorize this, this would be helpful. However, it's not necessary that you memorize it. It's just something that uh, I will write down here just for reference. You can derive this as long as you know two parts of the triangle, you can always get the last side. But I don't have our specific problem type for this one. This The similar and special tri right triangles kind of fit into one category on the math test. So I'm kind of going through all of it here like this. All right. All right. Next problem type is all about, I believe this is combinations. So, so combinations problems. Let's just go through the example. This person's car salon serves uh, automobile types with three types of car washes, five choices of motor oil, two choices of interior cleaning, and six types of detail wax. How many combinations of detail wax, motor oils, and car washes are available at this car salon if the driver must choose one of each? So if you're given a variety of options and you have to choose one of each, all you do is you just multiply all the numbers together. So in this case, you get 15 times, what, 12? And that gives you, I think, this number right here. Okay, pretty straightforward. You, this is one of the easier problem types you'll get. Um, if they ask you for two of each, that's where it gets a little more challenging. And uh, we're not going to be covering that in this video, but in a later skill video, we might touch on that. But you are very, very likely not going to see that. All right, next problem type is distance and Pythagorean theorem. So 
Pythagorean theorem is this formula right here. You've probably seen it before. If you haven't, it's very simple. Imagine I give you a right triangle that has obviously three sides and one of the angles is 90 degrees. So if I give you A, B, and C, if you know any two of these, such as B and C, you can calculate A. If you know A and B, you can calculate C, etc. right? So where this becomes useful is imagine you know that um, there's a grid and there's one person located here and another person located here. As long as you know how far vertically and horizontally they are from each other, essentially A and B, you can calculate their actual distance, which is C. Okay, so that's what this problem type and problems like this are going to be asking you about. So let's do this one. Micah and Mo live in different parts of the same city. This person lives 20 miles north and this person uh, and also 16 miles west of City Hall. And this person lives 14 miles south and two miles east. So what's the distance between their homes? So let's make a grid with miles and let's say um, you know, Micah lives 20, tw this is City Hall. This person lives 20 north and 16 west. So that's, let's go up for north and then left for west. So 20 and then 16, right? Let's go, and it's called Micah. And then Mo is 14 south. So let's just do this, 14, and then two east. Okay, two east. So we want to find this distance right here. So effectively what we just did is we made, now it's, it's, it seems like we made a triangle here and then another one here. If we calculate those two individual distances, that's not gonna give us the right answer. What we wanna do is actually make a giant triangle that combines the two things, where this is two and this is 14, this is 20. So we add 16 plus two and 20 plus 14. So 18 squared plus 34 squared equals C squared. You can calculate C uh, and it'll be one of these answers. Um, and that's how you do this problem, okay? It's it's just combining horizontal and vertical components of distance and then using this formula. Um, now, you also can reduce the square root expression. If you're not sure how to do this, um, just plug all these into your calculator until you get the decimal form that uh, you probably did on your calculator and ended up getting. So uh, that's it for that skill. All right, next problem type is finding composites of simple functions, or I guess in this case, it's not so simple. Um, so what we're, what we're going to do with with this form right here, what it's asking us to do is take this function g and put it inside the function for f by just plugging this function in for x. So any to anywhere that you see x, you replace it with all of this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is f of g of x just becomes square root of 4 times what used to be x plus 10. And in this x spot, I'm just going to put all this, x to the fourth plus x squared plus one. Okay, and that becomes four x to the fourth plus four x squared plus one plus 10, all square root, right? Um, now this becomes equals uh, four x to the fourth plus four x squared plus 11. Okay, um, or sorry, this becomes a plus four and then this is a plus 14. So your answer should be this, right? It's, it's fairly straightforward. There isn't much, you can't really simplify this. Uh, so these answer options are not gonna be correct, okay? So the idea here is you just plug in and then that's basically it. It's, it's, just, it's just a matter of plugging everything in the right spot and then distributing uh, and making sure you don't make any mistakes on that front. Uh, there isn't really anything else to do with this type of problem. So with that, we'll move on. Which of the following is the domain of this? So this is the next problem type. It's all about finding domain and range. Now with problems, with, with expressions like this, you um, specifically when you have x's or x plus one or x minus 10 or x squared plus three in the denominator, there's gonna be some values of x that will not be in the domain of the function. And what that means is there's gonna be certain values of x that are just gonna break the formula. For example, if x equals negative one, what happens? I get negative one squared minus one divided by negative one plus one divide, uh, multiplied by negative one minus five. Okay, so the numerator becomes one minus one, which is zero, and then the denominator you get a zero, and you get a negative six. So it's zero divided by zero. Um, now, the, 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 you can divide zero by anything, but you can't divide anything by zero. For example, what if I did, what if I plugged, if you plug in five here, what you get. Next problem type is all about dom 
The next problem type is all about domain and range. So there's going to be certain formulas and certain equations you'll get where certain values of x are going to break the formula, specifically when you have x in the denominator. So for example, if I have 10 divided by x, when x equals 0, I end up getting 10 over 0. What is 10 over 0? Do it on your calculator. It'll give you an error or it'll say unknown. Okay. So that's specifically where, in this case, x equals 0 is not in the domain. So your domain is all real numbers, numbers except for x equals zero. Okay. Now the same thing happens here. Like if I plug in to this problem, if I plug in negative one or five, right? Five minus five is zero. Negative one plus one is zero. I'm going to break the problem. So with those particular factors that make the denominator, not the numerator, forget the numerator. The numerator can be anything. It doesn't matter. But anything that makes the denominator zero is going to be out of domain. So the way that you formally calculate that is you take x plus 1 times x minus 5, literally your denominator, and make it equal to 0. And you just solve. So I clearly x equals negative 1 and 5. All real numbers except for negative 1 and 5. Okay, that's it. That's really how you do these. Moving on. Okay, finding lines of symmetry is the next one. So the shape below has 12 a 12-sided star shape inscribed inside of a 12-sided equilateral polygon. The star shape has six tips, four of which extend to the corners of the outer polygon, and two of which extend to the centers of the two sides of the equilateral polygon. How many lines of symmetry does the shape have? So a line of symmetry is basically a line that acts as a mirror. So for example, uh, we know that this is a 12-sided shape, and we know that this is also a 12-sided shape on the inside. So from top to bottom, clearly the left and right are the same from if we make a horizontal line, same thing happens. Where things get tricky is if you try to make lines like this. Like yes, what's here is technically similar to what's on the other side. It's a mirror in a way, but it's not a one-to-one -one mirror. What's here is not exactly what's here, right? This shape is not equivalent to what's, what's at this point right there. So uh, it has to be a perfect mirror. It can't be like, like there is, it has to be perfect symmetry in order for it actually to be a line of symmetry. For example, a case where you could have a diagonal line of symmetry is a square. You could have this, 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 or this. But a rectangle, this is not a line of symmetry. Even though these have equivalent area and they have the same shape, they're not oriented in the same way. Same thing with lines like this, like this, even lines like this, okay? A lot of those are just not lines of symmetry. The only one in this particular problem that is are the ones that I highlighted right here. Okay, so the answer in this problem is two. Hopefully this makes sense for shapes like this though. If I gave you, however, a shape that was just an octagon. Like imagine this inside shape didn't exist. If that didn't exist, you'd have a line of symmetry here, 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 here. Essentially at each point to point across, you'd have a line of symmetry like this. And at the middle of each line, you'd also have a line of symmetry. Okay, so I think you'd end up with 12 lines of symmetry, which is quite a bit. So that's how this particular problem works. Hopefully this makes sense. And again, it really, you have to make sure that the, the, the polygon is equilateral in this case, which in, in, they're probably going to give you on the test anyway. Okay. So next problem type is about finding slope from an equation. Quite simple. If you remember this form of the equation, y equals mx plus b, you remember that when you isolate y, that number that's in front of x or that fraction that's next to it is your slope. So uh, all you need to do is isolate y. Okay and then get it to this form. So let's isolate y. First, what, what do we need to do? We need to multiply both sides by x. Yeah. So we get negative four plus 16y equals negative 12x. Now don't get to this step and think, oh, my slope is negative 12, because it's not. We need to make sure y is completely isolated. So let's add four to both sides. So we get 16y is equal to negative 12x minus four, and then divide everything by 16. So we get y equals negative 12 over 16 x minus 4 over 16. Um, whatever negative 12 over 16 is, right? That's going to be your answer. So that's going to be negative 3 over 4. And that's your answer. Now, don't make the mistake of writing this as negative 12 x minus 4 over 16 and thinking that your slope is, again, negative 12. It's not negative 12. It's negative 12 divided by 16. Both of those impact that x. And so they both must be taken into account in that slope. Okay? Aside from that, that's basically it for this skill. The next problem type is about matching a linear equation with its graph or with what you are told about its graph. So in this particular problem, we're given that a line is graphed in the coordinate plane, has this slope and this x-intercept. So which of the following is the equation? So you think, okay, I know the slope is one over four, you know, given the y equals mx plus b, right? 
So, okay, slope is 1 over 4, x plus 4. Easy. Uh, this is wrong because we're not given the y-intercept. We're given the x-intercept. B is the y-intercept, okay? So, if we're given the x-intercept, what can we do with that? Well, I still want to use this equation. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in y equals 1 over 4, x plus b. And what you can actually realize is that x-intercept is just a point where, you know, the equation is hitting that x-axis. So I know that the x-axis at that point, y is equal to 0. And if I know x is equal to 4, my point is just 4 comma 0. And I can plug this point into the, into the, gra into the uh, equation where x equals 4 and y equals 0. So 0 equals 1 over 4 times 4 plus b. Let's solve for b. Uh, it's just going to be b equals negative 1. And that's going to be this answer right here, okay? So the whole process is we know our slope. In order to generate an equation, we just need to identify which of these y-intercepts is correct. And we calculated that y-intercept using this method. The last problem type I want to go through today is midpoint. Very straightforward. Um, so we're given two points and we're asked for the midpoint. Now, the way you calculate midpoint is you just think of it as an average problem. Okay, you're doing two average kind of processes. You find the average of the x, x values, you find the average of the y values. So in this case, what are your x values? You have 9 and negative 11. Y values, you have negative 10 and 12. To find the average. So 9 plus negative 11 is going to, uh, again, we're just trying to think of what's the number right in between the two. So 9 plus negative 11 divided by 2 is going to be 9 minus 11 over 2, and that's going to be negative 2 over 2, and that's going to be negative 1. Okay, that's your x value. And uh, the only answer option that has that correct is C. Very simple. And again, the way you find average is you do the average is equal to the sum divided by the number of numbers. So the sum is just add the two numbers together, 9 minus 11, or 9 plus negative 11. The number of numbers is 2. Okay, fairly straightforward. If you remember this very simple formula, rather than trying to remember the whole midpoint formula, if you understand, if you just understand it conceptually, it becomes a lot easier. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, the whole point of this video was to give you guys some exposure and understanding and some background into what are the particular skills that are tested on the math test. Um, so that when you go through your math exams and you, re you re review what you practiced, you actually can identify, oh, these are the skills that I'm missing the most. And this is the p particular concept that I need to learn rather than just reviewing exams, reviewing problems, and not really taking much away from it. So hopefully this was helpful. If you want more breakdowns and problems just like these, you should check out our website. We have t thousands of online problems that are just like ACT's official problems, and those will help you essentially practice repetitively and understand the skills that we discussed right here. We have problem sets that break down each of these individual skills, as well as videos that do the same thing. So you can learn these skills one by one and master them before you take your practice exam. So Hopefully this was helpful again, uh, and if you have any questions, leave a comment on our website or in the comments below. We'll talk soon.